celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. In this segment of the MTech Innovators Under 35 special, we put the spotlight on two innovators working in the field of natural language processing. Danish contractor who works with IBM Research India, who is looking at applications of NLP in education, and Sopan Rajdev, the CTO and co-founder of Haptic, a personal concierge chatbot startup that's been focusing on using natural language processing to build its bots. We began by asking Danish what the application of NLP in building IBM Watson education products has been like. One of the things that I was looking at uh, was in the education space was given a lot of learning material and course objectives uh, for a particular course, how do you identify what learning material is relevant for each course? Um, and that's an important problem because if you want to enable personalization or content recommendation of any kind, understanding what is the sort of learning material that you have and what are the course objectives is an important task. Course objectives are very, very granular. Um, there, there, there are tens of thousands of course objectives in a course curriculum, and learning material by is is unstructured, right? It could be in the form of videos, it could be in the form of blogs, it could be in the form of articles, um, and identifying what course objective is fulfilled by a learning material is is difficult just by way of how the documents are structured. All right. And what could be some of the applications that we are already seeing uh, that IBM is already using uh, your research to do? So this has led to the creation of three products within IBM, um, and as a as a platform, right? This enables a lot of education, personalized education solutions. So th think of it like if you want to make content recommendations for remediation in a self-assessment uh, scenario or if you wanted to give uh, recommendations for a tutoring scenario, all of this is enabled by such a platform that, that we've worked on. All right. So give us a practical real-life example of how this is being used. You mentioned that IBM has created three products out of it. So just talk us through those. So I think uh, one of the products, which is IBM Watson and Light for Educators, uh, specifically targets educators. Um, there, uh, I mean, identifying uh, additional learning material or resources is... Uh, manually is very, very hard. Right? Teachers spend a lot of time doing this manually and it's, uh, it's, it's time-consuming, it's an unnecessary burden when machines can actually do this. Um, so this is in fact a use case that this actually enables and uh, teachers can now you know, specify a particular course curriculum learning objective and then find related content uh, just because the machine has been able to identify this. And it's not just textbooks. You could have, you know, somebody could have put a tutorial on your local blog or as teachers somebody has shared a PDF of notes. All of those are now consumable and retrievable. So I'm going to take a, a stream of that thought uh, to you, Swapan, which is uh, content recommendation. Okay, if yes. I sort of pick up those two words in isolation, uh, that's fundamentally uh, at the core of what a personal assistant or a mobile concierge of the kind that you're building out with Haptic. Right. Content recommendation in chatbots is like one part of chatbots. So basically, if you were to look at it, the challenges that we face, it starts from the first message that the user sends us. You have to first understand what the user is saying. And I think that in itself, because users can speak in multiple ways, say when a user says, hey, I want the best flight. So, you know, you don't have all pieces of data to make that recommendation yet. So you have to then figure out, okay, if someone wants a flight, you need the origin, you need the destination, you need the time. So you start having a conversation at that point where you start asking them the questions that you need, the bare minimum that you need to get them the right recommendation. Along with that, you know, every conversation has emotions involved with it, right? So you have to make sure that the content that you're replying back with has the relevant emotions, the relevant feelings, so that the user feels like they're getting things done without really having to lose attention or lose their interest on it. You also, apart from uh, what Haptic does independently, you're also servicing uh, creating a B2B business, right? right? So you right. also sit at the back end of a lot of uh, other companies right. that are relying on your technology. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the learnings as far as uh, building those systems right. out? You know, the good thing was uh, the technology that we built and the chatbots as systems that we built, um, it, we didn't really have to tweak anything there to make it work on the B2B okay. side. So okay. the interesting parts was obviously, you know, we... Uh, you know, since we always had a consumer-based company, we always had a very big user experience kind of uh, KPI, right? So we would always make sure that the user experience is good. Translating that from a mobile app, let's say, to different domains, like let's say customer support, making sure lead generation or performance marketing, 
that's where you know you have to really broaden your horizon so it's not just a user coming in for just you know playing on a mobile app it's more about a user can be on a website really going through a problem that they want to get fixed now you know making sure your you know that experience is good making sure you know you can convey the right amount of uh, data to like information to them so i think the challenges and the learnings have been more around the U- ui ux around it versus let's say technology the core, pers- technology. The core technology you know the challenges that you're facing now in terms of uh, what next right you know how do you deepen what's available and in right. that context I also want to tie in aspects of a uh, conversational commerce right, right. which yeah. seems to be like the next frontier of where we are going right uh, with personal assistants on our phone and even in our homes right uh, where it's actually moving out of chat and messaging uh, into conversation and i'm guessing by conversation you mean voice voice right. i mean yes, voice. yes. Yeah. i mean voice perfect um no so you know when um, as of right now when we talk about chat bots we actually include voice we include uh, and text so we actually have started doing voice bots as well um the good thing was the additional layer required to service voice is a voice to text converter so you know when anyone speaks anything you convert it into text then we pass it through our existing technology and then you know the voice or versa which is text to speech to return back you look at uh, just the applications in voice uh, you know especially in india where there are so many languages and clearly people not comfortable typing what are some of the challenges that you foresee so english has a lot of resources um you have you know all the nlp tools practically yes. have started out and were started out you know keeping mm-hmm. english in mind um so there is some effort that's being done for indian languages as well it's nowhere close to what we have for english of course so for example when we were talking about uh, conversation systems you you expected a certain uh, in the beginning as he was saying right you expected a certain way customers would respond but that's not how they responded so that data got collected for english for example right you would need to be able to replicate that for each of them over time so there are, there are things of course that are reusable when you learn it for one language some of it is reusable but at the end of the day the focus also has to be on uh, creating resources, resources. Uh, which are not just tools but even data sets that can help you learn uh, such bots for those languages Someone for you. That's yeah. actually a right. big pain point for us. Yeah, so we'll get to the next billion. Yes. After the next billion, we're exactly. not talking in English anymore. Right? Say, if I was to take note, take the hardest of problems that we are going to be facing is in the vernacular space. Is how do we make sure we can, you know, and also in India, there's a lot of different languages. So how do you make sure, you know, you can do it for multiple different languages? Which languages to tackle first? Which one not to tackle first? Where the data sets are available? I think those are the kind of challenges which is the most uh, pressing for us right now. And for you, Danish, in terms of taking forward the work that you've done uh, presently, what's the next frontier for you? So specifically, I'm also looking at some aspects of conversation modeling and conversation platforms, as well as complex question answering. Um, so if you've got, if you, so uh, there's a lot of work that's been done recently in the academic space for answering simple factoid questions and and the like. but how do you answer complex multi sentence questions uh, where the user the is what are type of questions core core type of questions or something that somebody would post on let's say a forum right or a travel advisory forum uh, where you say you know you're traveling to delhi for four days attending a conference for an award i have for you know half an hour to meet a friend close to gurgaon where can i go and it is like this big question <laughs> and the answer is going to be the name of a restaurant but how do you end up answering that, that yeah. um so those are t- difficult uh, problems right and i'm looking at some of those aspects as well also looking at cost all right gentlemen thanks very much for joining us on this program and uh, more power to you thank you thank you thanks. thank you celebrating 16 years of young turks 